Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. In this video, I want to go over some very interesting updates for RDNA 3, which basically turns a lot of the specifications that we've been hearing for a number of months now totally and utterly on their head. And honestly, while these updates may sound actually perhaps a downgrade, in reality, not only are they sensible, but perhaps even a testament to AMD's engineering prowess. And we're going to get right into it after this message from the video's sponsor. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by whokeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional, as well as home keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. Just a small note before we go into the specifications and other bits and bobs. Um, I'm doing this audio only because I'm still getting over the cold flu thing that I've been dealing with. Um, but hopefully I'll be back to normal in the next couple of days. I'll be going much more extensively into this information plus some other stuff that I've been hearing in a, another video over the next couple of days or so. But but a number of people have been DMing me about some conversations that have been occurring on Twitter from both CopyT7 Kimmy, Grayman, as well as 3D Center. Essentially, what they have stated is that there is one GCD, most likely in N31. And if you've been watching the channel for the last week or two, you'll know that this is very much what I actually stated in one of my own videos. Basically, there is a single GCD for Narve 31, rather than the two GCD that we've been attributing to the SKU thus far. Now, you can see on screen a plethora of specifications. You can see the old specs, alternative specs, and new specs. So initially, we thought that the GPU had 15,360 shaders. I'm going to round them up, actually, and down for our sanity. Then we thought, no, actually, it was cut down from that figure, or the original figure was wrong, and it was instead just 12,000 shaders. But if you look directly below that, you can see that the GCD count was two. So basically, there were two um, compute dies, essentially, and these shaders, the 12,000 or so, were basically split between the two sets of shaders. Well, this does not appear to be right, because not only are we hearing this from Grayman, Kabuti7, Kimi, and so on, but as I've mentioned for the last week or two now, I have been hearing that it is just a single GCD. I put out my previous video and I've also been speaking to a couple of others in DM. Now, obviously because I've been sick for the last week, this video is actually a little bit, let's say, slower than it should be. But you can also see that there are some other major differences. You will see that chiefly MCD counts are actually higher than initially thought. So we believed initially that there were four MCDs. Actually, the MCD count has changed a lot. I'd even heard at one point it was closer to like, like 12 MCD. Um, and I'd heard eight MCD. But yeah, so here there are four MCDs. Uh, with the two older specification and the newer specification, you can see that there are six. Now, they're either 32 or 64 megabyte in capacity. Put a pin on that, we'll get into that in just a second. In terms of the number of workgroup processors, there are 48. And these are split across six shader engines, with each um, shader engine having eight workgroup processors. Now, you can see what I meant about the 32 or 64 here, because for the Infinity Cache, I've heard 384 megabytes pretty much consistently over the last several days, but I've also had some small bits of evidence to state that it's only 192 megabytes. Now, it's very possible that this is just down to skew, or it's very possible that one or both of these figures are incorrect. You will also notice, though, that the memory capacity and the memory 
config has actually changed as well. So previously we had 16 gigabytes of memory, and now it has gone up to 24. And again, there's a wider bus. Now there's a reason that this occurs. Of course, this is not officially confirmed by AMD, but to my understanding and what most leakers have basically understood so far, each MCD also acts as a memory controller. So basically it controls essentially a 64-bit bus. So what you can do very simply is use some very complicated maths. We do six times um, 64, that's six MCD times 64-bit, and that would come up with 384. Now, honestly, I am much more comfortable saying 24 gigabytes of memory makes sense for this card because it's the flagship. Only having 16 gigabytes actually always bugged me. Now, there were apparently 32 gigabyte pro variants, and I'd also heard about 32 gigabyte Halo SKUs, and I've mentioned them several times on the channel previously, but it always bugged me it was only 16 gigs, especially when we were hearing that the high-end Lovelace GPUs were 24. I won't read the rest of the stuff because, well, we've known about it for a while, but apparently the FP32 performance is basically 75 T-flops. And yeah, I'm pretty confident at this point that the new specifications are right. I would hasten to add, I would stress heavily that it's not necessarily correct. Um, because until we see official confirmation from AMD, do not believe anything 100%. But I do believe it's much more likely at this point that we are looking at a single GCD with 12,000 shaders, 48 workgroup processors, and again, a 384-bit bus with 24 gigabytes of memory. And I think that this card is going to be pretty damn impressive in terms of performance. So... For the raster performance, you know, I've heard various figures. I've heard anything from around 2.1, 2.2 times, all the way up to 2.5. Um, so I'm going to leave it, you know, kind of there on this topic because there's a lot more I have to say on N31, and I will in the not-too-distant future, as well as N32, N33. And I've also got some info as well on Zen 4 and some other bits. However, um, there are a couple of very interesting uh, topics I also want to squeeze into this video. And because I'm still not feeling 100%, i.e. I keep having to pause the video as I'm recording it because I'm coughing, um, we will uh, kind of move on. Sticking, however, on the subject of AMD just for a moment longer, there is a very interesting thing which is popping up for AMD, and that is a new graphics driver. And this is basically including the Radeon Super Resolution 1.1. FSR 2.0 is actually set to launch tomorrow. I'm not going to really cover that too much here because, well, it's going to officially launch tomorrow. But perhaps more interestingly than all of that, arguably anyway, are some improvements for DirectX 11. So basically, AMD have done some serious tinkering with their drivers. And, um, well... Yeah, you can see Cap Frame X here, and he states that Crisis Remastered is 24% faster. He's double-checked it, and to be honest with you, he generally does pretty good work. I don't really have much to say here other than this is really good. NVIDIA have enjoyed DirectX 11 performance advantages for quite some time now. So, quite frankly, you know, I'm, I'm all for this. I think it's absolutely wonderful that AMD are doing this. Sure, there are fewer games now which take advantage of DX11 compared to, let's say, three, four, five years ago, but they are still there. And this is essentially free performance, right? It's not like you have to pay for this. Um, it also, of course, coincides with the new uh, AMD cards like the 6750 and uh, 6650 and the 6950 as well. Um... But yeah, obviously, this is going to be irrespective of whether you own the old cards or the newer cards. It'll be interesting to see what happens if you go back a couple of generations. But either way, it's really interesting. And one other small thing I want to cover in this particular video, and it basically is to do with, well, Sony. There is a very interesting, uh, let's say, phenomenon that goes on in business and that is that there are earnings calls of course for companies and these are really interesting because well even if you're not investing in the company typically speaking 
companies need to be as vocal as possible of their shinies because obviously they want investor confidence and during the recent earnings call sony and this i'm going to be reading verbatim from ign here as they have a pretty succinct and decent write-up of it i'll leave it in the video description uh, basically, Sony made it clear that investment for developing software and existing in studios, such as Forbidden West and, uh, of course, Santa Monica, we plan to increase software development expenses and aimed at strengthening first-party software and existing studios by approximately 308 million US dollars. Going forward, we aim to grow the business uh, game business by strengthening our first-party software and deploying that software on multiple platforms. Now... Uh, naturally you could say well gee whiz that means you know the playstation is going to be you know releasing their titles on the playstation 4 when it's possible let's face it they are not referring to bringing let's say spider-man to the xbox therefore logically this is going to benefit pc gamers and again i have said for a number of uh, months now on the channel well kind of on and off that I really have been expecting Sony to re uh, reduce the time frame it takes between a game releasing on the uh, PlayStation and the PC. Now, I still don't think that we're going to see them release simultaneously. So, for example, if a new Uncharted is gets announced and is released tomorrow, they're not going to be like, oh, you know what, you guys get it the same day on the PC as well. Um, I mean, I would love them to i just don't think it's realistic for all of the titles but i think certain key titles i think they will do this and honestly it just makes sense at the end of the day um you know not only have they got the issue of course of the chip shortages uh the playstation 5 actually missed its sales projections because of the chip shortages which is not really sony's fault i mean they can't just produce playstation 5 some magical pixie dust but you know, at the end of the day, Sony obviously want to make as much money as possible. And, yeah, if you buy a game on the PC, there's a very good chance that uh, you probably would not have ever bought the game on the PS5. Or you may have double dipped. Um, and I think Sony obviously are being quite smart in this decision. It's going to be very interesting to see how the next couple of years in consoles shape up. And I think that Sony and Microsoft, as well as Nintendo, are probably going to be in a very different place in, let's say, two to three years' time. Not only in terms of how they're trying to push their products, but just generally speaking. With that said, hopefully, guys, you have enjoyed the video. Apologies for not sounding quite as energetic as normal, but uh, again, I have been suffering with this plague and it's not been particularly pleasant. I am feeling a lot better now, though, I have to say. Um... So that's good. And thanks to everyone on social media who has, or indeed videos that have been asking after me. It's been not fun being unwell. But with that said, thanks very much. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.